Welcome to the Sportlight Podcast for parents, coaches, and athletes. The Sportlight refers to the time in an athlete's life when they have increased ability to affect the culture around them and the increased opportunity to learn life's lessons through sports. This podcast aims to help parents and coaches capitalize on their athletes' precious time in the Sportlight. The Sportlight Podcast is brought to you by Especially for Athletes program. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sportlight Podcast. We're grateful to be joined again by Mark Larson, who's joined us in a previous podcast. Mark, how you doing? Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Well, we're grateful to have you again. One of your videos came up and it reminded us of of something that you've taught us as a member of our board and especially for athletes. You, you recited a poem that has had a big impact on you in your life and, and really relates well to the message that we have of eyes up, do the work, eyes up looking for people who you might help and, and do the work to lift and build those around you and never be the kind of person who tears people down. And, and so I was wondering if, if you wouldn't mind sharing that poem with, with our audience, and then we'll have a discussion about it. Absolutely. I'd love to. Now, this poem was one that I was taking off a cassette tape, but it took me so long to write it down off of the cassette tape that by the end of it, I had it memorized. And so we'll, <laughs> we'll give it a run here and see how it goes. It's named, the title is A Builder or a Wrecker. So it says, I walked one day through a lonely town and saw men tearing a building down. With a ho heap ho and a mighty yell, they swung a beam and the sidewall fell. I asked the foreman if these men were skilled, the kind you'd hire if you were to build. Oh, no, he chuckled. No, indeed, the common labor is all I need. Why, I can destroy in a day or two what it takes builders weeks to do. So I asked myself as I went on my way, which of these roles have I tried to play? Am I a builder who works with care, strengthening lives with ruler and square, sculpting my peers to a well-made plan and helping them be the best they can? Or am I a wrecker who walks around content with the task of tearing down? I think there's so much in that poem that helps us to see how we are with other people. And there's an amazing story uh, that I had as uh, witnessing this when I was in eighth grade, we had a superstar basketball player in our school, a guy that went on to play at the University of Utah, phenomenal player. And uh, he was he was the dude in our junior high school. We had seventh, eighth and grade, eighth and ninth graders there. And he was just a kind of a legend. Everybody knew him. Tall, you know, presence, all those things. So I'm at lunch. And there, and I'm standing kind of against the wall. There was a really cool ninth grader bench that only the ninth graders could sit on. And so we were exiled to the sides, right? And, and I'm watching this scene and they were rolling change across the floor for some of the handicapped kids that were in our school to like scurry over and pick up. And they were laughing and kind of mocking these kids. And I knew that was wrong. I, I didn't like it, but these were the ninth graders and I was afraid to say something. And so I just kind of stood by and watched it. So directly across from me down the hall comes walking this athlete and he sees the scene and immediately walks over to these other ninth grade kids and he just rips them. I remember his finger in their face and he was pointing at them and saying things to them that was like stern and strong. And I knew he was, he was getting into them. And I was like, literally tears in my eyes, impressed, so impressed by what he was doing. He then turns and walks over to the handicapped kids And he brings them in with his arms and pulls them close and asks them not to pick up the money, that these guys were doing things that were not nice and not to do that. And so I'm watching this scene. And then he turns and looks back at these guys and points his finger at them again and doesn't say anything and walks back down the hall. And it wasn't his lunch. He was on like a hall pass or whatever, but he saw someone wrecking. And he knew that he couldn't stand by and watch that. And from that moment, it changed me. I mean, I watched that experience and thought to myself, I am never going to let that happen again. And then had lots of opportunities throughout my life, being an athlete and being a guy in the school that people looked up to and, and what E4A is, right? You're people, you're a, a presence in the school that people know. And I knew how that impacted me. And I know that we can have that same impact. And so as we walk around our life, there's wrecking everywhere. 
but everywhere there's wrecking and the world doesn't need more wreckers. There's plenty. We've got that covered. They need builders. They need people that will stop it, that will take these handicapped kids in their arms and show them how to be, that they'll pick up somebody's books, that they'll encourage somebody, they'll invite somebody, they'll love somebody. And I just, the principle of building is what this world needs so much more of. And I, and I know that when I've been a builder, I've been way more full. My soul has been full, but I feel so much better about who I am and what I am versus this perpetual culture that we have of wrecking, of mocking, of memes, of all the things that we live in right now. And it's just this subtle way to wreck people. And we just don't need any more of that. So it's just been such an impactful thing for me, for my children, for all the kids that I coach. I, I've said this poem a thousand times in my life. And I love the message that it gives and what it can mean to each of us. That's awesome. In fact, I, I think, uh, Dustin, Mark, of the relationship uh, between that poem and the easiness of wrecking and, and um, how hard it is to build and you know, that's true when it comes to these things we're talking about, because we all know someone could give you 10 compliments and then someone mocks you or, or gives one non-constructive criticism. And which one do you remember? You know, it's way easier to make an impact on someone's life in a negative way, it seems, than in a positive way. Dustin, what are you thinking? Well, we, you know, we, I think it's important that we assume, because it's true, that everybody is wrecked in some area at, at all times, right? Um, even the person that we think has it going for he or her, it, it seems like everything's going well in their life. I'd be willing to bet 100 out of 100 times that that person closes the door regularly and has thoughts and things that they're they're going through and, and moments by themselves that they're on their knees praying or, or or hoping that something will be different in their life, some struggle that they're dealing with. And then they, you know, but we get really good at only posting things on social media that shows we're happy. So if we live in that world, we think that everybody's happy. Or when we're out in public putting on the the persona of happiness um, and that things are okay and hiding behind a smile or, or a laugh or something. And for a lot of our athletes, by the way, it's easy to hide behind their sport because when they're out there on the basketball court doing basketball, that's their thing. They're comfortable there. Like life is easier there for them because they're good at it. It's something they are praised when they're, when they're doing, they are in that, that sport light and, and, and appreciated and recognized. And, but that's, that's, that's an hour of their day you know, an hour or two of their day. The other part of their day, they've got a whole other life that may be wrecked. And so I, I think that idea of understanding that everybody's wrecked in some area and how do we build that? You know, Shad, you you on a recent uh, post, you know, talked about the story of the hunting dog being injured and that, you know, when you, when you look close at people, you realize that most people are acting the way they're acting, not because they, they, you know, there's something that, that they're, they're not, they're not stupid or they're not, you know, annoying on purpose. It's that they're injured, they're hurt. There's something going on. Um, and we say, seek to bless and not impress. If we're truly seeking, if we're really looking at people and seeking with intent to find out how can I be a builder of their life, we'll find something. If now we, we need to gain trust with that person, maybe to get them to open up to us and talk to us. But if we go to those people that trust us, that we love, and we're really seeking, we're going to find something in their life that maybe we can help them with and, or, uh, or that we need to ask them for help with. If we're just casually looking for ways to make the world better rather than seeking, um, we're probably going to find as we look back that maybe unintentionally sometimes and intentionally, but unintentionally more than, than not, I bet, we probably have a wake of destruction behind us that we unintentionally left because we weren't seeking to bless. Um, and, and so that, yeah, that going along with what Mark said, I, I think that that assume everybody's broken in some area and then how do we seek to find what that is and then help them? 
Well, and, and relating to that story you shared, Mark, of that basketball player, it's more powerful. This is the whole purpose. You know, the, the name of our podcast is the Sportlight Podcast. The name of our book is the Sportlight. Because of the attention that's given to athletes, either they wreck at even a more efficient rate or they build at a more efficient rate. They're, they're more powerful at either one or the other. And that's why we feel it's so important to go into schools, to go into uh, junior high teams, you know, to go even speak to a peewee football team and help them understand that, look, you are going to be a builder or a wrecker. Uh, and, and you'll be either a really good wrecker or a really good builder because you have the sport light. You can't choose to turn that off. And it's so cool to hear stories like the one you shared of this, this young man who learned at a young age that, that I could use my position as a big, strong, tall athlete with the attention I have to build, to build. And that, that's an incredible thing. And then Dustin, the other thing is you were talking about that, that I remember you taught me one time, Dustin, that by your example, we were going to do a presentation together and we had driven two hours up north and, and we got there early. We wanted to make sure we weren't, you know, going to get caught in traffic. So we went to a McDonald's and we're sitting there eating in a McDonald's. And I, I think I'm a generally nice guy, you know, uh, but I saw something that day that really clicked something in my mind where there was this mom and she was wrestling with two or three kids and, and Dustin and I were sitting there, you know, eating our meal. And one kid said, I want ketchup. And the mom had like, I mean, she had kids pinned in all around, you know, and, and she kind of made this exacerbated look like, I got to get out mm-hmm. around my kids. And Dustin just popped up, said, Hey, I got this you know, pumped a few things of ketchup, brought it over to their table. And the thing that clicked in my mind that day is it's, it's not always the big things. It's, it's a lifestyle, what we're talking about. And so now I'll intentionally, um, that day I made kind of a commitment to myself that this is just going to be the way I live my life. This isn't going to be this, I'm going to put together this big service project, or I'm going to I'm just always going to look to lift and and our wristbands remind us of that. And so like when I go into a grocery store, I'm telling you, it's a good way to live your life. It's made me a happier person is when I go in, I just, I say a little prayer, you know, I'm a man of faith. Not everyone even has to be who's listening to this to do this, but man, God, is there someone I can find to lift in Macy's when I go in today? And you know what? There's always someone, even if it's the cashier, who's just mind numbingly scanning things. Just, Hey, how are you doing today? Thank you so much for what you're doing. Uh, It's the holidays, man. This is a busy time. I'm sorry. You have to work tonight for people like me on new year's Eve, who's coming to buy Martinelli's, you know, like just those little things that we do. If we could just have a mindset to lift, and never wreck. I I honestly think it's one of the secrets to a happy life. Scott, I had the exact same experience. I was teaching or preparing kind of a lesson on service. And, uh, and so I I was thinking a lot about it. And I had, and I looked closely at myself and thought, well, I do a lot of things for the people that are close to me, right? The people, my kids and my family and and those people, but I do I do enough for everyone else? And so that week, I kind of, the switch turned on for me, right? I'm like, man, I need to live different. And that week, I remember going to Walmart at lunch to pick something up that we needed at home. And I found five opportunities that that very trip to help people, right? Help people put something back or just jump in and, and you know, like kind of like the catch-up thing, right? I could just help. And I was like, man, I'm missing all of those in my life. And so... Yeah, it's like, I, this is my new way of life. I'm, I'm going to be this lifter. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be intentional. I'm seeking these opportunities. 
And yeah, it's such a happier way to live, such a happier way to be involved and, and uh, just find ways to love and impact people for good. It's just, it's a beautiful thing. So I love it. Well, and Mark, I know you got a, you got a hustle to a, a, a meeting here. So maybe I'll wrap this up and then hand it to you, Shad. But in the idea of being a, re- a wrecker or a builder or seeking to bless and not impress, you know, I, I, I think parents that are listening to this, we have to sit down and have these conversations with our kids. And we probably beat this, you know, to death when we're on these podcasts. But this, if you're driving in your car, you're listening to this at work or whatever, it's great. We understand we need to do these things. We need to be more intentional. We need to, but it's not the job of the coach of your child to teach your child to be intentional or to teach your child to be a builder and not a wrecker. We hope they'll do that. We, we hope we have coaches out there that do that, but that they, it's our job as parents to sit down with our son and our daughter and have these discussions with them and encourage other parents to have these discussions with them. So please if, if, if things we discuss on these make sense to you, if you think they could be helpful in other lives, please share and talk about these things and open up discussions on how can we better parent these kids coming up and how can we in our own lives, by example, be more intentional in making sure we're not wrecking, but uh, we're building, we're seeking to do good. Chad, why don't you wrap it up and then we'll uh, we'll let Mark get going. Uh, well, Mark, thank you for joining us today. And the, the two thoughts on my mind that I'm taking from this, and I'm sure there's many takeaways, but one is, you know, it's a happy way to live, to seek to bless is one of our core principles, to live your life the way you did that day, Mark, and that Walmart. Um, and I think sometimes our teenagers – especially they become so self-conscious that their arrows are pointing in all the time. What is everyone thinking of me? What is everyone thinking of me? A wise woman once said that her mom gave her the counsel when she was worried about acne as a teenager. And her mom said, you do everything you can to make yourself look beautiful. That's important. But the moment you walk out the door, forget yourself and try to help others feel beautiful. I think that's a secret to life. Like, do what you can, take care of yourself. But the minute we walk out our door, just try to make everyone else feel good. And that's truly the way we'll we'll feel good about ourselves. And then just the last element that came up already, but everything we're talking about, the sport light amplifies and makes it more powerful. If we wreck someone, it's more, there's more wreckage in our wake. If we lift someone, we lift them higher because of the sport light that these awesome athletes have. And so Mark, thank you, man. You are awesome. You make such a contribution to our program and we appreciate you joining us again on the sport light podcast. I love being here. Thank you. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. Please subscribe to this, share it with, with others who might be interested. And in addition to that, we are everywhere on social media, Instagram, uh, uh, Facebook, TikTok and Twitter. We share these little messages in small bites there. So if you like these things, subscribe to our social media pages and share them, share them with other. You can find us at, at especially for athletes or on Twitter, it's at E4A family. So thank you so much for joining the Sportlight podcast. Eyes up, do the work. Hey, what's up, everybody? We wanted you to hear a few of our related social media posts. You could follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok at Especially for Athletes or Twitter at E4A Family. So give a few of these a listen and subscribe. Most people are not idiots, they are injured. This is the lesson that someone taught me that literally changed the way I looked at people. Here's the story that taught them the lesson that they shared with me. Jack had a hunting dog that he loved, and he was so excited to show off his new hunting dog to his new son-in-law. They drove to where they'd be hunting, climbed through a barbed wire fence, and headed back to the pond. Pretty soon, the duck started to fly in, and Jack shot the first duck and told his dog to fetch it up. But his dog just stayed where it was and did not respond to Jack's commands. More forcefully, Jack said, fetch it up, and finally his dog meandered over, grabbed the bird, and brought it back. Pretty soon, another duck flew upon him, and the son-in-law shot it, and it came tumbling down in the pond. Once again, Jack told his dog to fetch it up, and once again, the dog did not respond. 
Frustrated, Jack coats his dog into the pond and it swam this 10-foot circle and came back without the duck. Jack's son-in-law turned to him and said, I don't feel comfortable shooting birds that your dog's not going to retrieve. Agreeing, but dejected and frustrated, Jack, his son-in-law, and the dog headed back to the truck. He put down his tailgate and told his dog to load up, but the dog wouldn't jump in. Frustrated, Jack picked up his dog, threw it in the back of the truck, and when he went to go shut his tailgate, he noticed he had blood all over his hands. Examining his dog, he found that his dog had a six-inch cut on his belly that he must have got from the barbed wire fence. Instantly, Jack's emotion changed from frustration to compassion. He wanted to help his dog. Most of the time, when people are behaving inappropriately, like Jack's dog, they are injured, they're not idiots. That lesson changed the way I looked at the world. When I see someone behaving like an idiot, I tell myself they're injured. Then my heart is full of compassion and a desire to help instead of frustration and a desire to criticize. Give it a try. It sure has helped me in my life. I'll forever be grateful for that lesson that Jack taught me. Keep your eyes up and do the work. Hello, everybody. First of all, I just wanted to say thank you so much for your awesome response to the last video that I posted about Jack's injured dog. I'm glad that story from Jack Christensen seemed to resonate with so many of you like it did with me, and I hope that it helps your life as much as it helped mine. In the comments, some seem to suggest that if we approach people with compassion and concern as if they're injured, that we would be condoning or enabling their poor behavior. The point wasn't about other people's behavior, it's about our mindset. We're more likely to help people if we approach them with compassion and concern rather than with judgment and criticism. It'll make us a kinder person. It'll even help us have more kind feelings in our hearts, even for those drivers who cut us off and get into the lane, as some suggested in, in the comments. If we just assume that something's going on in their life, then it will allow us to have a better mindset for our life and have more love and compassion in our heart. A story that I experienced might illustrate what I'm trying to say. So shortly after Jack had taught me this lesson, I was teaching a class and it was first period. And a young man would come in every single day and he would put down his head and he would go to sleep. That concerned me as a teacher because I loved my students and I loved the subject that I teach. Now, if I were to approach this young man from a place of judgment and criticism, I might go up to him and say something to the effect of, hey, what are you doing? Why are you being so lazy? Get your head up. Why are you so careless? Things like that. Instead, I applied what Jack taught me. I approached the young man and I asked him the questions that you would ask someone if you were worried about them, if you were worried about them being injured. I tapped him on the shoulder and I said, hey, are you okay? He looked up at me and he said, yes, I'm so sorry. My family is about to lose their home and all of us kids have gone to work and are earning as much money as we can to try to hold on to our home. I work at Little Caesars every night till midnight and it's just super hard to wake up for my class first period. Now you can imagine the feelings that I had in my heart and I was so glad that I approached that young man with compassion and concern instead of criticism and judgment. It just allows us to be nicer to people even if they are obstinate or acting idiotic. It's about us, it's about our mindset. It's not about other people. That was the point of Jack's dog. And especially for athletes, we try to train our athletes on these things. If you're interested in these lessons, subscribe to this page or click on the logo and get in contact with us. We'd love to come talk to you. Thank you so much. I wanna show you one of the most heartbreaking but less impact pictures of all time. This picture was taken during the famine in 1993 in the Sudan. The photographer had traveled from his home to bring attention to this horrible suffering. He was taking pictures at a nearby feeding station when he just felt overcome by all the suffering that he was seeing. So he decided to walk off into the bush for a little bit to be alone. 
That is when he saw this little child huddled down, struggling to make their way to the feeding center. As he positioned his lens to take a picture of the struggling child, a vulture landed in the background. After taking the picture, he was so overcome that he went and sat under a tree and wept. When he realized the vulture wasn't going anywhere, he got up and scared away the vulture. When this picture appeared in newspapers, people wanted to know probably what you want to know when you see it. What happened to that child? When the photographer was asked this question, he explained that he watched the little child struggle out of sight, but he was not sure if they made it to the feeding station. People were outraged at this photographer's response. They thought, how could you not pick up that little child and carry that little child to the feeding center? How could you not make sure they made it there? But I don't judge him too harshly because I see a lot of myself in him. You see, there are people all around us who are starving for things, not just food, for love, for attention, to be included, to feel like they had a friend, to feel important. Sometimes I see these people starving and like this photographer, have a good heart about it, but figuratively speaking, just sit under a tree and cry. Or sometimes, like this photographer, I offer a temporary solution and scare away the vulture, knowing it's just going to circle around and come back. I want to be better when I see suffering at picking people up and carrying them to the feeding center. We can't do that with everybody. But as we meet with athletes around the country, we challenge them to find someone who is starving for something and use their influence as an athlete to pick that person up and carry them to the feeding center. And that's our challenge to you. Keep your eyes up and do the work. This has been the Sportlight Podcast from Especially for Athletes, sponsored by Coca-Cola. You can learn more about Especially for Athletes by visiting the website at especiallyforathletes.org. You can also learn more about the book, The Sportlight, by Shad Martin and Dustin Smith at especiallyforathletes.org book.